Hello, everybody, and how are you all doing today? It is Rusty Champagne back with you again, and I hope you are having a wonderful day. We are here once more in the wonderful world of Synergy, and I wanted to give this one another try. So this one, I'm, I'm going to go through this one a little bit quicker. Uh, once again, if this is the first time that you're seeing this on this channel, I do have a first look video available. I will make sure that I have a link to it in the description, but I won't be going through all of the tutorial text that is on the screen um, just to help get the gameplay going a little bit faster. So you, uh, feel free to check out the first look, and that'll kind of give you a little bit more of a... Uh, uh, insight as to what's on all the screens without hearing me actually read it all through again. So, but I wanted to come back to this one again because I felt like when we played it last time, I, I really messed a lot of things up, and I don't know if that gave like a, the the best look at this at this game. So I wanted to try this again and see if we could do a little bit better in our next time around. So we're going to try and do things a little bit more organized, not do it as slapdash as we normally do in the world of Rusty Champagne, because I think I realized a couple things I did wrong. And so we're going to try and do this again. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to get some water. So this is where we need to build our pontoon and build a retention basin. And then we also have to build a water tower. So we're going to get all these tasks done. And so now we're going to go here. We're going to hold down the right mouse button and scroll. And now we can build a pontoon. And we have to get right to the spot they want before we can do it. So we're going to go here. We're going to build a pontoon. And we're going to zoom out. Not that far. Maybe a little bit closer. We're going to put the pontoon there. And then we can hit escape. And then we can get a retention basin going, which we will put right there. And then we need to get a water tower going, which we will set right there. So now we have all those things going. And now we can fast forward. So all these take resources. So that takes five boreal rock. That takes five bark and five tree trunks. And this takes whatever it took. Now, I remember in the first video, I'm like, where, where are we getting all these things from? Where, where are all these materials coming from if we just landed here? And I didn't realize that we have this starting storage up here which has all of these things in it. And I, I'm like, where is this all coming from? And that's where it's coming from. So we actually came with some starting storage, which they don't really tell you about. And then you're looking, it's like, okay, things are magically appearing. And I don't know from where, but I don't think that this can be moved. So I think it's just right here. And if there is something that allows you to move things. So I don't know if this mobility does anything. It does not appear... That's no. So this is just for the different things that you can do. So if there is a way to move something, I do not know what it is. So I'm going to assume, yeah, that, that doesn't seem to do it. So, but anyway, that's where all the beginning items are coming from to build this stuff. So that answers that mystery. So now the pontoon has been completed. We do need to build the water tower and the retention basin to get that part of the, of the uh, tutorial taken care of. So we will get these finished. We can click on them. That is just about done. And now this is also just about done. And when that's done, we will then move on to the next step. So we will slow this down. So then the next thing that we need to do is we need to assign two citizens to the pontoon to make the pontoon function. So we will do that just by clicking here. You could do, also do it by pressing S. So we will get those citizens working on the pontoon. So they will get dirty water for us so they will get toxic water then we need one in the retention basin who will take that toxic water and turn it into clean water so now we have 10 citizens three of which are at work and seven of which are currently going to be able to serve as couriers and that's where i got myself into trouble last time was that i had too many people that were working and not enough people that could be couriers and everything fell apart so we are going to make sure we do not do that again so now we have water available and now, so it tells us about how we obtain water, and it tells us about how every cycle of the game is made up of 40 days, and you can see the cycle information down here in the lower left. So the first four cycles of the game are all temperate seasons, which are apparently the best seasons we can ask for. So now we need to build another retention basin, so we will do that. And that is going to be resource refining, and so we can put that over there. And then we need to assign, uh, excuse me, another citizen to that retention basin once it is built. So we will sp speed up time once again. So they're bringing the boreal rock from our storage area. 
and they are coming here to work on it. So this worker is just waiting for the water to be extracted from the pontoon, and then it will go into the retention basin, and then they can start taking the toxic water and making it clean. Meanwhile, this retention basin is about halfway through being finished. So we do have two people that are currently working on getting it built. And then once that's done, we can assign a worker to work in the retention basin. And it is now done. We will slow time down again. Put a worker here. So that way, once again, once we have water at the pontoon, so it does water every two days at this point, because they only told us to put two people in, which means that right now this is working at a 50% efficiency. Now we can speed that up, and I'm just gonna leave it as it is for now, but we could speed things up by putting two more citizens in there. For whatever reason, in the tutorial, they only say to put two in there, so that's what we're going to do. So right now we're just waiting for water to become clean, and we will speed up time again and let that happen. So now there's some dirty water. There's a courier who's taking that to the retention basin. This retention basin will take uh, the 20 toxic water it has and then clean it up. So that will be done in about another two days. And so now this retention basin is full. And this one is, and is now turning dirty water into clean water. This one is just about done with its clean water which will then finish up this part of our quest so now they are waiting and now they've taken the dirty water they've turned it into clean water so we can we can slow down time so now they're telling us that we need to get some houses as well so we are going oh now we need the rock first okay so we are going to get the rock and they're telling us about the withdrawing resources action which will basically withdraw all the resources and then basically wipe out the thing that you're withdrawing the resources from. So we're going to get resources from the rock clusters and we're going to do that. So we're going to now we're going to build a small warehouse, but we're going to build it closer to town because that was another thing that we kind of messed up when we did this last time. So we're going to go here. We're going to do the withdraw resources action. We're going to do it on this rock cluster. And now we need to build a warehouse. So we're going to build a small warehouse. And we're going to put it, oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, I think I did a bad thing. So we're going to go back here, construction menu, small warehouse. And where do we want to put it? Why is that doing that? Um, so let's see, if we click this, what did I do? Um, let's see. Let's, uh, let's go to storage, small warehouse. All right, let's just hit escape. And let's see, let's get back to square one. Small warehouse, okay, I did something. <laughs> I didn't mean to. So we're gonna take our small warehouse, we're gonna set it here, kind of in the middle of all the action. So there we go. Now they're going to, I gotta stop hitting WASD. That doesn't actually do anything here, and I think that's my issue. Because so many other games, WASD does something, and in this game it does not. So they're getting all the rocks out of this rock cluster. And once that's done, someone will come here and pick up the rocks and they will take them to the small warehouse. And then that will finish up that portion of it. Um, but right now, they, or maybe that only does 10? Maybe not. So I think that that's actually 30 boreal rock there. But right now, they're just waiting on this to get built. This is going to take a little bit of time. So we're going to fast forward time again. So you can get up to four speed on time. And now if we look, so we have a, oh, that's a cinder sprout. Okay, I was wondering what that was that kind of popped up there. But that's what that is. So this one is waiting on some water because it does not have any water. Okay, so we're going to slow time down. So now actually I'm going to pause time. So if we look at our small warehouse, this is all the things that the small warehouse can hold. So it has a total capacity of 800 and it can hold all of these different things in it. So it has the ability to hold a whole slew of different things. Um, and the one thing that we're going to be putting in there is going to be boreal rock. So we're going to get that. So now the boreal rock that we harvested or that we withdrew from the resource now is being brought over by this worker into the small warehouse. And if we click on him, it actually shows what he's delivering. And so there should be a couple more resources that are being delivered. And if we look there, yeah, there's the other 20. 
that are now being delivered. So they will take those over. And now we have to build some housing. So now it's telling us about housing. And it's also telling us about the fact that you need some clean water and you need some food. So you need to build a cellar in order because the cellars are going to hold your clean water and your food. And so then it's going to also tells us about transport and priorities. And this is where we messed up last time because we ran out of people to transport goods and everything went a little bit berserk. So this is where we're going to take it a little bit easier. So now we need to build, build a cellar. We're going to build that also here in the neighborhood of everything else. So we're going to put a cellar right about here. Set it right next to the warehouse. So those things are right next door to each other. And again, this one is just waiting on water because it's all the water is basically going here. And if we look, these two people are working on water. So we really could get a couple of a couple of extra workers in here. But we're going to hold off for now because we have six workers that are working and four that can act as couriers. So we're just kind of holding off. These are bringing resources over to... Oh, they're actually bringing resources to the small warehouse. Okay, so they're emptying out the starting storage. And they're bringing everything that was in the starting storage over to the small warehouse. Okay, now that's something I never noticed before. Is that they're basically taking everything that they have in the small warehouse, emptying it out, and bringing it... Or everything that was in the starting storage, emptying out the starting storage, and bringing it to the small warehouse. I got it now. So meanwhile, while we're discovering all this because we're actually slowing down a little bit, now we actually have to get some houses built. So we're going to build some houses. You can build them any way you want. It's just these are, they're all the same kind of house. It's just what do you want them to look like? So this is all just basically about looks. So we're going to take some houses. We're going to get, uh, we'll go with this one. And we're going to put some houses up. And we'll just put them up back over here. We'll just build three in a row. Just like that. So we'll get those all set up and rolling. And so each of these houses needs some rock and they need a couple of tree trunks, which the tree trunks we have in store from uh, from what we had in starting storage. So right now we're waiting for our houses to get built. Uh, this is waiting on someone to work on it because all of our workers are currently assigned and all the other people that we have, our other three people are currently working as couriers. So I think after one of these transports some goods, they should then turn around and start working on building this house. Is what I believe should happen. So we shall see. Yeah, so now all the houses are being built. So now we're going to fast forward this a bit. Now I'm going to slow it down when we get close. Because if I remember right, the last time that I did this, uh, when we had the third house built, that's when the, we did have a little bit of a game glitch. So we're going to hope that that does not happen again and throw us out of the game. So we shall see. Just one moment. So we're going to slow this down once it gets to about 95%. And we'll let it go the rest of the way just at single speed. And hopefully this will finish up with no issue. So will everything be fine? Yes, perfect. Okay, so no issues there. All right, so now we have housing. So now this is where we need to start actually gathering things. And this is where I really messed things up because I, I messed up all the gathering. So I didn't pay attention to what we had from a gathering standpoint and how to do it. So we were like getting rid of all the crops and we should have just been picking the things off of there. So we need at this point to build a, a mobile workspace. So it's going to tell us about that. And then we can get surface analysis, which with surface analysis, which tells us about what we can do when we withdraw resources and harvesting. So we're going to then build a, um, so that is going to be understanding the world. And we're going to build a field lab and we can put the field lab basically anywhere we want. So we're going to just put it kind of over here. Actually, we'll put it over here. So a field lab is going to go there. So now these guys are saying that they need some food and they also need, um, I don't know what the exclamation point, oh, the construction has been completed. So they just need food and we don't have any food in the nearby storage because this is why we need to get the field lab set up. So that way we can see what it takes to pick these bushes because right now 
with this being a brand new land, we don't know anything about anything here. So we don't know what's going to happen if we try and pick these bushes, which is why we need to build this field lab. So that way we can learn what these bushes are all about when we try and pick them. So now we have a field lab set up. We also need a picker's cabin. I should have been building that already. So um, this is going to be our picker's cabin. And this is what's going to give us the harvesting. And this is where I goofed up. So we're going to get the picker's cabin built. And we're going to put it over... We're going to put it up here. So I'm just going to set it there. Just building these things in, in somewhat random places. Not necessarily completely random, but a little random. Because, hey, it is Rusty Champagne. Rusty Champagne. <laughs> I don't even remember my own... My own channel name. Okay, so now we need people in the field lab. We have six people working. We have eight that are available because of the houses. That gave us more people available. I still don't know why these are pink, but there's a reason. I'm just not sure what it is. So we are going to get a couple people in here to start working on some field lab work. I'm just going to put two there for now. And then we're going to do analysis. We're going to do surface analysis. And we're going to analyze this sharp bush because this does have moisture pods, which is what we need. And so we need moisture pods because those are going to turn into uh, those are going to turn into things we can make for food. So it's going to do the analysis there. It's going to take the analysis back to the field lab. Meanwhile, while that is happening, we are going to see how far this is along, and this is just about done. So we're just about 100% here. So this is done, and we need an assigned worker. I'm going to put one worker here, and then we're going to see what this does if we have a worker there. So now we're just waiting for the analysis to be done on that bush. So it's working on that analysis, and once it's done, we should have a note here saying that that analysis is completed. Um, so it does have a magnifying glass on it. Oh, maybe that's what they're, they're just showing what they're analyzing. I see. And maybe at this point, so we do have seven and seven. All right, so we have an analysis report. So now this tells us about moisture pods. So if we do withdraw resources, we get sticks and we get the pods. If we do a pick action, we just get the pods. And we can prune them to get the sticks. So now this is the thing. If we go to the picker's cabin, if we go here, and if we do add a task... So we can do fruit picking, and we'll have them pick. Uh, can it pick all of these? So can we have it? Oh, so we can set all these up to be picked. Okay, I think that's it. So can we have them do more? Can we just tell them to pick all of the ones that can be picked? We're going to see what happens here. So I'm going to leave that right now. So maybe it's just going to be the one citizen that does that. That's my question. Because if we have one citizen in there, are they going to do all of the picking? So let's check that out. That might be the case that we have one citizen in there and they're doing all the picking and they're not doing anything else. So let's see. I think that's the case because I don't see anyone else that's doing that. So I might take a couple more people then and assign them also to start picking. So I have three citizens picking. We have five that are available. So now the first thing I'm going to do immediately is I'm going to build another house, even though it has not told me that I need to build one because we need more people here. So I'm, I'm going to not make that mistake again. And maybe I shouldn't do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to build another house. And I'm going to build one that's a different color. And we're going to put it there. And eventually I'm going to need some more rocks. So we will need more rocks at some point. Right now we don't need to worry about it. It hasn't said anything about it. But we are going to get these things picked. And so right now we're just obtaining the 20 moisture pods. So it's taking the moisture pods from the picker's cabin and moving them over to the cellar. And then at some point, then I guess, can we assign... A different task okay so now this is where it tells us about resources so in order to get resources we're going to need a forge and we're going to need a kitchen so we need to build a forge in a kitchen because we have our 20 moisture pods so we've taken care of that and then this is where it tells us about recipes and what it takes to make different things and you can find those at the kitchen in the forge and this is where everything went full-blown nuclear <laughs> this is where it all got messed up 
So, all right, so they are all working at the picker's cabin. So if I look here, it looks like the only thing I can tell them to do is the one thing. So all they can do right now is pick. And they've picked all the things they can pick. So, okay. So right now they're all just kind of hanging out, waiting for things to be able to be picked. We're building another house, so that way that will give us more workers. Because right now we have 11 people working and only three that are available to do other things. So we want to fix that up. That house is just about done. So now we need to build a kitchen and we need to build a forge. So we are going to go here, resource extraction. And nope, that's not that. So we need uh, resource refining. So here we're going to build a kitchen. We're going to build it near the town again. So we're going to build it near our cellar. And we're going to put that right here. And then we're going to build a forge. And we're going to put it out a little further. So we will put it... So this is going to produce resources from water and from sticks, it looks like. So now we're going to try and not have everything go kablooey when we do this. We'll put, the, we'll put this here. And because it hasn't really said anything about putting things in places. So I'm just... I'm kind of building wherever it seems right so now this is where we need boreal rock so now we need some people to get some more boreal rock and we have 11 people available and three that are working so i think at this point i can get someone to come here and get some more boreal rock so we will go here and all right so there's someone that will then come here and get some of this rock because we need that rock in order to build the forge all right, so slowly but surely, everything's going good. We we haven't blown anything up. It's, it's it's still all going good. This person is working on getting the boreal rock. They will take that. They will make the forge. Everything still looks fine. Um, and then once we have the kitchen, that's when we can start doing some stuff in the kitchen, I think. So we have 14 people in town. Um... They all have... Oh, and actually, the house doesn't do anything. So, oh, so, okay. So, all right, I built a house, but all that does is it gives us... It gives us capacity for people, but it doesn't actually bring the people. So, okay, so that was pointless. But I learned, because we only have 14 people available, nothing is changing the fact that we only have 14 people available. I've just got to be smart on how, that, how I use them, is what it is. Okay, so now we have the people... We have a forge. So now if we hit escape here, we can look at what simple meals take. So now the next thing we need is we need vegetables. So in order to get the vegetables, we have to then go to the field lab and learn what's going to give us vegetables. So we are going to do some research, some surface analysis on these uh, cabbage shrubs. So we're going to have them do some analysis on the cabbage shrubs. Once they're done doing the analysis on the cabbage shrubs, then we should be able to start harvesting vegetables from them. So we're going to let that happen now. So we're going to hit escape here. And they're going to come back and do some analysis. And again, right now I'm just I'm trying to make sure that we don't have too many people that are working on things. Because that's where it all went sideways last time. So it looks like everyone is fine. At this point, we got two people operating here. We've got a couple people that are working on that. So we will have five available once they are done working on building the forge. And we're just trying to make sure that we don't get too much happening all at the same time. Okay, so this is where we can uproot this and we can get flexible fibers and vegetables. Or we can just pick it to get vegetables. Or we can prune it to get the fibers. So now we can go back, I believe, to the picker's cabin and we can tell them to start picking the cabbage shrubs. And only the people that are available will start picking the shrubs. Okay, but that's not what I needed to do. So let's go back here and we have to... Oh, they're doing fruit picking. Um, so do I have to take that off? All right, so maybe we need to... Let's see, cancel... No, uh, let's see escape all right so do we cancel this and do we change it to something else apparently we do so then add a task oh no it's still fruit picking okay 
So I don't know. All right, so we're going to have them pick those fruits, but now we're going to have it go out here, and they're also going to pick these vegetables. And we're going to have them pick a handful of vegetables. So again, only the three people that are able to, that are assigned in the picker's cabin are going to do any picking. But I'm going to have them go out to other places because only those three are going to do anything. So I think we're still good. And yeah, so we're just going to set all these up and all it, that won't cause any issues because only the three people that can pick will be picking. So that should be fine. I do believe <laughs> I'm, I'm holding my breath and I think we'll be all right. So we're going to hit escape there. And now that will start bringing, once we look in the cellar, then these are going to give us, so we have some moisture pods and we have some vegetables. And we want to get to the point where we have enough vegetables to be able to make some food. And we need 40 simple meals. So a simple meal takes six moisture pods, six vegetables, and four clean water. And then that makes 10 simple meals. Now, I believe that the seller can hold simple meals. Okay, so it can. So now when I tried doing this last time, that's when I started having things that were spoiling all over the place. And I think it was just because I had too many people that were doing too many things. Okay, so now we have the forge. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the kitchens because I, I want to do this one at a time. So we're going to have the kitchens going. I'm going to have um, two people working at the kitchen we now have enough vegetables going i think yeah because i think we have enough vegetables in okay we oh we have um do we have 24 in there it said we had 24 but according to this we only have six so now if we look here do we have to tell it to make that so we have 10 and we have 18 Oh, it's, it's gathering all the resources. Okay. So I think, it, so it should bring all the resources over. So we got the 18, we got the 18, we got the 12. And so will that make basically, that gives us three rounds of 10, I'm thinking. I'm just, I, I, I'm just holding on because like I said, th this is where everything went really, really bad last time. Um, City Prosperity, so that's 26. This is the first time I've ever looked up at that. Um, so we've got 26 Prosperity. I guess that's good. I haven't looked at any of these things up here. So we have all those remedies. We have that much water. We have that many prepared foods. We have that many basic foods. Okay. So now that has done good things. Okay. So far, so good. I think we're all right. I'm going to take one person and put them at the forge. So we don't have any sticks. So now this is the trouble because I don't have any sticks, but we don't have enough people. So I do have to start reassigning things because I don't see a way at this picker's cabin unless we reassign this to not be pickers to then have them go out and because right now this is just on fruit picking so this leads me to believe that i need to build another picker's cabin in order to then have people that can do some pruning and maybe that's what i've got to do so i'm going to take uh i'm going to take a couple people out of the picker's cabin i'm going to leave one there for now I'm going to build another picker's cabin. Again, I don't know if this is right, but, but this is what I'm going to do. So I, I'm trying to apply some rusty champagne logic to this and see if this is the way to go about it. So we're going to go here. We're going to go to, is it Flora? Yeah, we're going to go to that. We're going to go to the picker's cabin. We're going to build a second picker's cabin. So that way we have one that's available to do some pruning and one that's available to, to do some picking. And again, I don't know if there's a way to have them to have it where you have two different options. From what I'm seeing on the screen here, it does not appear to be that way. So, and these guys need the bark, and I believe that was the bark. So now they're doing that. So we still have three people available that can do some gathering and and be couriers. So we got. I'm, I'm making sure that we leave three as couriers to basically move stuff around. 
because stuff constantly needs to be moved from place to place. And that's where I don't want anything to go kablooey. All right, I'm going to speed this up to get that picker's cabin built. And then once it's built, then we should be able to then get a second set of people that all they do is do pruning. So, okay, so that's good. All right, so now that's going. That has no assigned workers. This is new. And now we're going to put a couple of people here. And you are going to do some pruning. And you're going to prune these. So you're going to do pruning. And we're also going to have you do pruning here. So it shows you what you're going to get from pruning. So we're going to have all the pruning go on here. And we can have some more pruning happen. Uh, where else are we doing some picking? So we'll do some pruning on these. Have them kind of go out into the distance a little bit. Okay. So now we're going to have some pruning that's going to occur. And when that pruning occurs, then that will then take those goods. So it shows you that we do have these sticks here. So these sticks are here waiting to then be transported to our small warehouse because those sticks will reside here. So now we have some sticks that are going to go into there. So there's the six sticks that they had that were just in the picker's cabin. So now we're going to go to the forge, and it looks like in order to make 10 tools, we need 30. Oh, no, we only need, uh, oh, no, we need 30. We need 30 sticks. So we'll wait until we have some more sticks. And once we have some sticks, then we will get another person and put another person there. Because like I said, right now, I've just got three people that are basically running all over the place and gathering the things from the picker's cabins and from our retention basins and basically taking everything to the warehouse and the cellar. And we're just kind of leaving it at that. I could almost at this point take one person out of the field lab because I don't have anything that we're analyzing. So I'm going to take one person out of the field lab that will then give me more space to do things. All right, so the town is kind of humming along kind of nicely. We now have our 30 sticks. So now we can assign a couple of citizens. I'm going to assign one. So now they're going to bring the 15 water and the 30 sticks over here, and that will start making some tools. And then I think I will actually be at the point where I was last time, and I didn't have anything blow up. So I already feel a lot better about things, given the fact how badly it went the first time around, because it was not nasty. If you haven't seen it, go check out the first look, because it was really, really, really funny. Okay. So right now we are just waiting for the um, the sticks to arrive. We need 20 more sticks over there. So they are bringing him over. And again, we have just our three couriers that are still in town bringing stuff to one place or another. So now we have our tools that are being made. That's going to take five days for them to make. And again, I'm, I'm leaving those other three people there. I'm, I'm exercising an abundance of caution, maybe too much abundance, but I just want to go with that way because if nothing else, I can always speed up time. I, I can't do anything if I have things starting to spoil left and right and sideways. So these guys are just continuing to make um, meals. And I'm guessing they're going to stop when we start running out of moisture pods and so that's where I wonder, should we get some more people? Can we get some more moisture pods getting picked? I think we need to do that. So if we go here to the picker's cabin, I guess we can, if we click on that, how do we get them to then uh, go towards more spots? If we just click, uh, oh, select items? Oh, that's how we do it. So if we click the plus key, it allows us to select more items. So we're going to have them go out here, pick more fruits from these. Because right now, the, the ones that we have, we've picked dry, and they're also now too small. So we've got to get more areas where we have moisture pods available because we're running out of moisture pods. So we're going to get all those. And we can highlight these other ones. They won't actually pick them. Um, 
but because there, there's nothing there to be picked. But we're just going to leave that for now. So they're going to go around, do some more picking, because that's going to give us more moisture pods. Because right now we're, we're running low on moisture pods. We don't have any available in stock to then keep making small meals. And that's where I don't know if something's going to happen if we then have like spoiled resources. So just taking it slow, as slow as we can. Um, because it, it is easy to break things if you're not paying attention. Okay, so we're almost done with the tools. That's going to be just a little bit. We can speed up a little bit of time here. We'll speed it up all the way. And then we will have the tools done. All right, the tools are now complete. Someone will come and pick them up and take them to the small warehouse. So now we're, now we're just waiting for someone to do that. So now if we look here, we're out of moisture pods. So now this is going to be interesting to see if anything happens here. No, this is stopped. So nothing's happening because it's waiting on the moisture pods. Okay, awesome. All right, so that's done. So now we have enough to ensure our survival, at least for now. But survival alone doesn't keep citizens motivated. So if we want to keep them motivated and enable the community to truly live again, it's time to think of it as a city. We need to plan and build communal living spaces designed for con conviviality and recreation. So we have another four. Oh, I see. So every time we complete a task, it gives us more. It tells us when we're getting more adults. Okay. So now we have... Um, so it's telling us about basic needs. So it's telling us about weakness. So if we don't have food or clean water, then they're going to get weak. When a citizen is unwell, then they start getting slower. And then we have different causes of citizen death, which can be by starvation, dehydration, serious illness, or de death or disappearance during an ill-fated expedition. Okay, so now we need a district. So we need to build a square, and that will allow you to begin designing a district. So um, let's see. So we can just do uh, different kinds of districts. So let's see. Is that a, No, these are decorations. Population. So... We need a district, so a cultural square. Oh, okay. So we need a cultural square, and that's going to be five by five. And I don't know if it said where to put it, um, but we'll put it. We'll put it here by the houses. So we're going to build a cultural square. We're going to build it here. Okay. That might not might not have been the best place to put it, but it's where we're putting it. So there we go. And then we need a district score of two hundred, and then we need to complete a social district so maybe that's after the square is built that we can then complete a social district so we'll let that get built and we'll see what happens here so now we have seven we have five workers available two of them are working on this so now we can put more people into picking so we can put another person into picking and we got two people there and we can put another person theoretically into forging um and we'll we'll kind of leave it at that. I'm feeling comfortable with everything. So we're just going to let all that ride. How long is this going to take? We're a fourth of the way there. So let's get this sped up a bit. We're now in cycle number three. So cycle number three is another temperate season. Now, if we look way out in the distance, we're going to have a dry season where it says tough times await. Surviving will require all of our ingenuity. Most plants wilt away during the season. Wells and retention basins alike dry up. Faced with the heat, the daily grind is harder to bear for our citizens who risk heat stroke if no precautions are taken. So that'll be interesting to see when we get to that point in another episode, um, exactly what happens there. But right now, we're just kind of waiting for this to get built. So we'll speed this up a bit, get the cultural square going. We have two citizens that are homeless. I forgot. If I look up there, we do have two citizens that don't have a house. So we do need to get another house built. So let's get another house going. And we'll kind of build it, um, let's see, housing. We will build one. We don't have one like this. So we'll build one, and we'll build it over here. And we'll try and build it in an area that makes a little bit of sense. So we'll build one there. Uh, I'm not sure how much sense that makes, but it's what we're doing. So we're going with it. Um, yeah, the sound looks a little bit a little bit weird but okay so now all right so that's our district okay so if we zoom out everything there is part of our district got it so we want to try and have that as central as we can so i guess i could have built it more over here and then we would have had all that but that's fine so we're just any building we do we're going to go that way so now we need a social district so i guess if we click that then we need a social district so we need one canteen and three stone houses Okay, 
So social district. So now we need a canteen. So to get a canteen, we're going to go to, um, let's see, what would it be? Population? Looks like it. Good guess, Rusty Champagne. So we're going to build a canteen. So that's going to employ up to two, res to, up to two people, and it produces um, things from things. <laughs> All right. And so we're going to have plus two per assigned citizen and plus two per assigned citizen. So we're going to build this and try and build it. Ooh, this is a big boy. So let's see. Where can we build this? And I think we can hit shift to rotate, and we can so where can we put this? I guess we can put it here. Because we need this kind of... Whoop, let's go over here. And I guess we can put it on the water? Okay, so we're going to build this. Kind of build it there. Because it's in the district. So there we go. So yeah, if we look at that, our cultural square, that shows us that we got a social district. And we have all those things that are contributing to the score... So all those things contribute to the score, and that would give us a district score of 200. So now we have some stone houses. Um, so what all contributes to the score? A sun awning, a kitchen. The kitchen is not in range. A bar ate. I'm assuming that's something French. I should know that because I took French many, many years ago. A table and some housing. And then street lamps, beaches, so all the things do. And then all those things don't. So production buildings take away, retention basins take away. Okay, so we got to watch out with what we have in there. And then those things, edible and shady are good, stinky is bad. Okay, so I guess we'll see as we get that going um, exactly how things continue to contribute there. All right, so now we have no one that's homeless. We have 15 people that are working. We have three people that are couriers. All still seems well here in our area. So I don't know if there's a way. I wish there was a way if we could move this kitchen, but I'm not seeing it. Uh, and I guess I can take a look. That's just for paths. Um, let's see. If we look here, is that views more? No, views. Housing satisfaction, districts, well-being, socializing and leisure, culture access, places of knowledge. So that's just different things of views. A uh, world map? No, we don't have any of those available. So that's our book of knowledge. So I don't see anything on here about being able to move something. And that's kind of causing a, let's see, destroy buildings, construction menu. Um, no. Prioritize. So, yeah, and I don't want to destroy a building. It's just not right now. It's not part of our kitchen. So that's unfortunate. So that means we're going to have to build something else that's going to contribute to the district score. Because right now the kitchen does not. I mean, I could move the cultural square, but I don't know if that's really the way to go. So everyone has returned home. Um, I guess they're all done working. So, Or maybe they're all eating or stuff like that. How close is this to being done? Oh, this is going to take some time. But they, oh, they want to eat. Okay, that's fine. That's a lot. Um, and new people went in, or new people came in. So let's get this sped up a bit. Um, and so they are going to work. They are at work. Okay. And we can close that up because we're not actually looking at that right now. So we will get this built. That should get us to a district score of 100. And then we should see somewhere on the screen that we have a district score of 100. So let's take a look on the screen. And if we look, so we have a district score of 160. So this is, how did we get to a district score of 160? So we got 100 for the, what gave us the, so what is the 40 that we're missing? So we got 10 for each of the houses. Um, huh. So something gave us 100. Maybe the kitchen is in range. Maybe part of it's in range. Possibly. So we still need 40 more. So let's see. Uh, maybe the kitchen is. Maybe there's a well. So what else can we build to get us there? Uh, let's see. Um, the, the housing is probably helping. The production buildings are not. And what else can we put here? Can we put in some decorations, I guess, maybe? So, oh, but those are going to take a bunch of stuff if I do that. Let's see. Is there anything that we can put in that's not going to eat up a bunch of our... So how much is a table? I forget. If we put in a table, that's going to be 10. 
and that's going to be uh, 10 pieces of rock. So, and those are benches. And then we've got a ground medallion. I don't know if that helps. Uh, we can get a well. So, can we do anything here? Can we do anything with a well? I'm not seeing it. We're just kind of scrolling through our options here to see what we have available. Um, that's a field lab, flora, housing. So we might just need to build some other things. So, yeah, <laughs> I wish it would tell us everything that's contributing, but I'm, I'm not quite seeing it. So let's see. We can build a table, so we'll, we'll do some decorations. So we'll build a table. We'll put it over here, and that will help. And then I guess we can do another table back on the back side. So do a couple of tables. That'll help get us a bit closer. And let's see, the maximum amount of socializing and leisure points obtainable by district homes rises to 30. Okay, not quite sure what that is all about. Okay, so we don't have any assigned workers here. So this needs... Oh, so this is small meals. Okay, so then if we assign a person here then that will start making culinary arts, which gives us culture. Okay, and then that will increase our culture points, I'm guessing. Okay, so we got 170 now. Now we got 180. And now we just need another 20. So what else can we do that's going to give us 20 more points? And how many people do we have available? We got four people that are available as couriers. So we need another 20 points. I mean, I guess I could just be easy and build another couple of tables, but it'd be nice to do something else that wasn't necessarily table. Oh, there's a sun awning. Oh, shoot. I didn't see that. Um, that's great. Right, let's do a sun awning and put it there. I wish I would have seen that before. So we'll put a sun awning right about there. And, oh, we're missing uh, bark. Uh, how do we go about getting some bark? So let's see. Oh, no. Oh, we, it's bringing it. I was going to say, I thought we had plenty of bark in the warehouse. And we should have plenty of uh, tree trunks. Yes, we do. So we'll have some bark. We'll have some tree trunks. We do have bark, right? Uh, are we out of bark? Or is it... Oh, we need five bark. Okay, so now we do need to get our field lab going again. All right, so field lab. Let's analyze bark giving things. So let's go here. Surface analysis on these trees. Because we have not analyzed these trees yet. So let's get some tree analysis done, and that should give us the bark that we need in order to make our sun awning, which will give us our district score of 200. Again, I'm not sure what all this is about. And I, I, I'm, I'm kind of seeing some things on the screen and, and kind of trying to figure it all out. And, I mean, the, the tutorial does, does help to a degree, and then some of it you are kind of left a little bit to your own devices to try and figure it all out. Um, but... It's uh, like I said before, it's a really pretty game. I like the artwork in this. I just like the design. It looks really gorgeous. I love the the, the color pat the color palette that they use in here. It's it's really unique and it's really a pretty style. So right now we're just waiting for the research to be done on I guess I could get another person here in the field lab. Because we've got, yeah, so we'll get another person in the field lab. So that way we're actually doing a little bit of analysis faster. And then we can get the analysis done on this tree. can probably prune the trees so that way we get the bark that we need in order to make our sun awning. And then that will probably take care of things here. So re receiving analysis report. Look at that. We can, all we can do with this is we can just yank them down that's all we have they can't be harvested so these would just withdraw resources and then they're gone so we're going to go yeah and we're going to withdraw some withdraw some resources we're going to take them from this tree and this tree and that's it because every one that you do that's going to basically use up an available person so we're just going to leave that alone going to have those two people go out because that was a mistake I made last time I, had, I did withdraw resources and I had people running all over the place to withdraw resources and it all went crazy okay so now we now have those trees that have been taken down 
And some resources have been brought here. The rest are going to the cellar. And now we will get the awning built. That will take not too long at all. And we will get that finished. And then we should have our district score of 200. And we shall see that momentarily. So we will speed up time just a smidge to get that done. Okay, so there we go. There it is. Housing satisfaction. The well-being of your citizens is closely related to their housing quality beyond basic needs. Housing quality is evaluated based on access to well-being, to social interactions, cultural spaces, and places of learning. Uh, for example, scores are, access scores are applied by select buildings to all cells situated within range. For example, the school applies an access buff to surrounding places of knowledge. Okay. Um, and then, so it's going to focus on well-being access. So it's proximity to vegetation, presence of water plants, and shade coverage. Okay. Refer to the well-being heat map to identify the most suitable locations on the map. Check the building details in the construction menu to identify those that impact well-being and construct those buildings. Okay. Well, that'll all be stuff that we will do in our next episode, I believe. But now I, I do feel better. Nothing went into flames in this episode. We, we did everything a little more slowly. Um, we didn't yank down all <laughs> of the things. Uh, we didn't destroy all of the crops in the process of this. We, we just were harvesting, we're pruning. Everything seems like it's fine. We, we got people that are all kind of pretty well assigned. And all seems like it's going a little bit better in Synergy Land this time around. But that is going to be it for this episode. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I'd like it if you considered giving the video a like. If you really liked it, I'd really appreciate it if you consider giving the video a, a the channel a subscribe. But that is all for now. Until next time, thank you very much once again for being part of my silliness. I am Rusty Champagne, and we will see you later.